Prime Minister Boris Johnson faced a vote of confidence last night, coming out on top by a narrow margin. Despite this, his victory, the results reveal that four in ten Conservative MPs voted against the Prime Minister, which is a higher proportion than voted against Theresa May in 2018 and Margaret Thatcher in 1990. Yeah, well, in a speech after the vote, a defiant Boris Johnson called the result decisive and vowed to move on and deliver for Britain. And what we need to do now is come together uh, as, a, as a government, as a, as a party, and that is exactly what we can now do. And what this gives us is the opportunity uh, to put behind us all the stuff that I know the, uh, the media have quite you know, properly wanted to focus on for a very long time, uh, and to do our job, which is to focus on uh, the stuff that I think the public actually want us to be talking about. Well, uh, what do the great British public think about the Prime Minister's survival? Remember, you can uh, email ngbvs at gbnews.uk to let us know your views. But uh, one man who is an expert engaging the public mood is Sir John Curtis, who's a political scientist and professor of politics at the University of Strathclyde. Thank you, uh, Sir John Curtis, for joining us this morning. Look, Boris Johnson has survived the vote of his uh, parliamentary Conservative Party. How would he fare if he was... Uh, being put to if his leadership was being put to a vote of the general public uh the honest truth is he would be out on his ear by more or less the reverse of the result of the conservative ballot we actually had three opinion polls yesterday morning uh, in the wake of the announcement that the ballot was going to take place they found 60 percent of people saying that the prime minister should resign that's exactly the same as what the polls were saying in the immediate wake of the publication of the Sue Gray report. And indeed, it's very similar to the 63% of people who are saying he should resign way back when this story first broke in December and January of last year. Now, of course, those who voted Conservative in 2019 are less keen on the idea of the Prime Minister resigning, but even so, again, yesterday's polls, as the previous ones, suggest that around one in three of those who voted for Boris Johnson in 2019 think he should go. So there is no doubt that um, the Prime Minister is in deep water with the public yeah. so far as the party issue is concerned. Yeah, absolutely. And um, if I can just speak about uh, a bit more about those demographics and those differences between the, the groups who have changed their mind or their opinions about Boris Johnson. Uh, Obviously, he won a lot of red wall seats in the 2019 general election, and a lot of those MPs probably owe their uh, job to Boris Johnson. What is the feeling, the mood in those sorts of red wall seats when it comes to how Boris Johnson's doing? Well, the, the truth is that particularly if you look at the views of Leave voters who are more common in so-called red wall constituencies, whereas back in December 2019, around three quarters of those people who voted leave in 2016, voted for the Conservatives for Mr Johnson. In the current polls, the proportion who would do so is only just over 50%. Or to put it slightly differently, around one in three leave voters who voted Conservative in 2019 are at the moment saying they would not vote for the party if there were a general election now. So that inevitably means that the party is likely to struggle in red wall seats, but frankly it's also going to struggle in blue wall seats as well at the moment. And we've seen a couple of opinion polls in Wakefield together with indeed the results of the local elections in Wakefield, one of the classic red wall constituencies with a by-election later this month, they all point pretty firmly to a Conservative defeat. So uh, it's not the case that Boris Johnson's lost the remain end of his support, he's lost some of that as well. But he's also been losing ground very heavily amongst those who voted for Brexit and yeah. many of those who voted for Boris Johnson because of Brexit. Look, I mean, I mean, you absolutely no disrespect here. You are uh, you are a, a standalone, uh, eminent uh, 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 person in your field. But uh, it's all very well and good saying that people have lost, you know, faith in Boris Johnson. But I think people have lost faith in pollsters, haven't they? I mean, they're wrong more the times than Michael Fish, as far as I can tell. They're wrong about the American election. They're wrong about Brexit. I mean, uh, uh, how do we know this is true? Well, uh, the honest truth is they weren't as wrong about Brexit as you might imagine. Of the six final polls, two had leave ahead. And if you take all of the polls that were conducted during the EU referendum campaign... So we were just being more, lied to by the BBC, uh, were we? Were we? So you, you know, sorry, Patrick, let's, let's just get our polling history right. There are mistakes in the polls, but 
Let me put it like this, Patrick. If an opinion poll after opinion poll repeatedly tell you that around three quarters of people say that the prime minister was not telling the truth about party game, okay, we can have an argument about whether or not the real figure is 80%, 75%, 70%, or even 66%. But what you know when polls repeatedly come up with that kind of number is that the vast majority of people do not believe the Prime Minister's account of the, of the party gate scandal. And of course, you, you do then that actually see then eventually reflected in what people say to camera. And the boos that you hear heard of the Prime Minister outside St Paul's Cathedral, they're not necessarily representative, but they are iconic of a mood that is very... Can, clear can, you, can you understand why people don't trust the polls? Oh, yes, oh, absolutely. And I would always say to people that you should... You should take polls, but you should never inhale them. Um, and you should certainly not presume that they're going to be pinpoint accurate. But the point is, when polls repeatedly tell you that the government, mm. uh, that the prime minister is not believed, then you should be sitting up and taking notice and not assume that this is some fabrication of polling error. That, I think, is to take reasonable skepticism about the polls to an undue extent. And, and, and as a result, perhaps blind yourself politically as to mm. what is actually going on amongst the wider public. Good stuff. Look, thank you very, very much. Really appreciate you, as always. Uh, John Curtis, of course, there. Pulsar expert. Uh, yes, indeed. Well, let's go to your views. Mm. Lots of you, of course, have an opinion on the Prime Minister, and I, I have to say many of our viewers have a positive yes. um, opinion of the Prime Minister. Ian here says, forget Partygate, it's just a distraction. What about his manifesto promises to mm. crack down on uh, crime and immigration? Policing is now non-existent, so... I think that's an important point, actually, mm. because I, I can't remember who said this, but I read this on Twitter. I think it was an MP who said this, um, that people are voting, the people who voted for Boris Johnson yesterday mm. in that confidence vote, his MPs, mm. were not voting necessarily for Boris Johnson. They were voting for him to get on with what they promised the British public in 2019. Their vote, mm. It's a vote to crack on with that policy agenda they yeah. put forward in their manifesto, which they haven't been able to, to really get on with. So... You know, m many people will be thinking, let's yeah. just get on with, with what you said you would do. They, um, excuse me, gosh. They have also changed that manifesto a little bit as well, haven't they? I mean, I'm not sure how many people voted for this kind of big net zero. No, that was in the manifesto, to be fair, going net zero by 2050. Yeah, I know, but to this extent right now, you know, it was just a bit, I think it's a bit nuts. But anyway, Graham's been in touch. I would vote for Boris, but not for the Conservative Party as it is today. They're a bunch of children. That's, that's Graham's view. Of course it is. Loads of you have been getting in touch as well about what I said earlier about terrorists, which is that I would frankly execute them. Um, uh, and, yes, people seem to be uh, largely in favour of uh, that particular view. We're going to be talking about how we handle terror later. GBV is GBNews.UK.